metal 3D printing in space. You probably think, well, wait a minute, I've heard about 3D printing on the space station for years, and that's true. But it wasn't metal, it was plastic. And it turns out there's a reason for that, and that's just that it's a lot harder to do. It had not been done before. And yet, really, you'd like to have the ability to print metal. You know, you want to bake a wrench. Well, when you don't have one, it takes a long time for Amazon to get up there and deliver you a wrench. So you want to be able to make parts. And that's especially going to be important even going further on the moon. Again, it really takes Amazon a long time to ship you a wrench to the moon. You want to be able to make your own. So there's a lot of parts that are metal. They have to be. The plastic wouldn't be strong enough or it wouldn't stand up to the high temperatures, whatever. And taking a step back, thinking about the future economy where you want a circular economy in space, where you send stuff up into space, instead of having it just come back and vaporize in the atmosphere, you'd like to reuse it. And that saves you the money of launching stuff. You can recover it up there. And this is just sort of a start toward that. Well, at least you can recycle some of the metal. On a large scale, you're going to need something much more than this. But at least it's a start on at least trying to make some parts, get some useful material out of satellites that are up there already. Anyway, as I said, actually back in 2014, they first started printing plastic parts. And they do actually use those. So they're going to do this with metal, though. They're going to print a total of four. They printed the first one in August, and there's still three more to go. And what they're doing is they're doing it in parallel. They're producing the parts up there, and then they've already produced the parts on Earth, and then they'll compare the quality. When they finally bring it back down, at some point they'll bring these parts back down, and they'll run them through lab tests. Strength is good, the structure is good, and so on. Are they accurately built? Who knows what kind of problems you have? And uh, Greg, uh, yeah. were the parts on the ground also 3D printed using the same yeah. equipment? Yeah. So they're just trying to see how it performs and weightlessness versus yeah. down it's, here. And because okay. weightlessness, you know, it's the microgravity. That is the big issue. Everything behaves differently. So for instance, an awful lot of the 3D printed stuff for metals right now is actually used a process called laser sintering, where you take metallic powder and with a layer, basically you melt it in little pieces and you kind of go around and you build up the melted pieces and then you have a lot of dust left over and you kind of brush it off at the very end. You really can't do that in space. I mean, there's just, it's, it's a mess. I mean, you know, people are going to be breathing in pieces of little metal. It's just not going to work out too well. So they had challenges. And the other thing is that typically those machines are a lot bigger than the desktop kind of stuff where you print out your Starship models or something. It's a bigger deal. With a washing machine size printer, they're only going to manage something that's about three and a half inches high, and they're circular parts, but you know, maybe two inches wide. But the big thing is the high temperature. A couple hundred degrees is all you need for the plastic. Here, you have to get to 2200. And there's fumes, you know, all kinds of fumes come out of this. You really can't have that in the closed environment of a space station or a moon base or something. So Airbus is the one actually building this. What they did, well, first of all, is sort of the obvious solution is you put the thing in a big sealed box. So at least you capture all those little loose parts of metal and fumes flying around. You take care of it inside of a sealed up box. The second thing is that they're using wire, basically stainless steel wire. Traditionally, most of the 3D printing here on Earth is mostly with powder, whereas the plastic ones that most of you probably are more familiar with, yeah, you typically feed those with wire, cable, you know, plastic uh, sort of thing. So they decided to build the process based on stainless steel wire. And then they're melting it with a very high-powered laser. The melting area is about a millimeter of 0.04 inches. Anyway, the other thing they have to do is they have to purge the atmosphere, which have oxygen in it. And that's another reason for having the sealed box, is you want to be able to pump in a pure nitrogen environment. That way you avoid oxidation, rust, basically. Um, what it looked like, basically you just had this box on the outside. You can see that in the center here. They have a cassette of wire, and they melt it right here. Unlike a printing cartridge in a printer or something, actually what moves is the table that the parts are mounted on, and it's called a motion table. And then it's fed in, and there's a video of that. So the table itself is rotating. There's the fixed position where the high-temperature metal is being melted and added to that particular surface. So that's what it looked like. That was done on Earth, but that's not the picture from space. And the very first test was just to print some S's on the table itself. It actually took them many, many months to get that to be successful. There's a lot of calibration that had to be done, apparently. They just don't know how to model this stuff that well. But now they're at the point where they are actually doing this. They did produce the first part, and they have three more they're doing. I think that's it. Other space-related videos or slide presentations by me are available at the link shown here. That includes a list of videos at my YouTube channel. 
so you can view them or subscribe for notifications about future videos. These presentations are mostly made as part of the meetings of National Space Society's North Houston chapter, and the link to that is shown. Topics like these are presented as part of a monthly news segment, and there are also lots of other interesting speakers and open discussions. You can attend in person or online via Zoom. Come join us.